This is what the early version of the launcher slash app drawer looked like. It only loaded the primary apps and left all other .desktop files undisplayed. What this meant was, if you installed something new, the desktop launcher would be missing. After flashing the new dev kit image, this is all changed. Now the launcher displays all installed .desktop files. So, for the first time, we can see what is pre-installed on the dev kit. And I must say, some of this stuff was not expected. The first thing I found a little odd was there was a few redundant applications. We now have two terminal apps, King's Cross, which I'm sure will be the default one at launch, and what looks to be the default GNOME terminal. When testing with King's Cross, I noticed something really interesting. The top bar turns red when you use sudo or switch to the root user. It also has two vims, surprisingly, no emacs. The vim launcher simply opens a terminal with vim running. I cannot say that's a remarkably intuitive interface for a text editor on your phone. Gvim is definitely a step closer, but uh, isn't loading at the moment. The calls, messaging, web, and contact apps are appearing twice. At the very top, like before, but also down below with all the other app launchers. I was also surprised to see GNOME tweaks installed. The menu is clearly not using libhandy and needs some heavy work to be usable on the Librem 5. But it's interesting to see it pre-installed. No Maps is also pre-installed. Playing with that on my desktop has surprised me how functional it is. It can create old-school turn-by-turn directions using OpenStreetMaps as its dataset. It is a good bet that this will become the navigation app on the Librem 5. However, it does not run on the dev kit at the moment. Barfing out this message. The calendar app is not perfect. Lots of dates are cut off. However, adding an event is very simple. Making it redundant with just this little menu thing. Cool. Chess is also included by default now. Like the calendar, GTK needs a little bit of work here. Yeah, can't really control half the board. But the AI does seem to work well and is thoroughly kicking my ass. Man, I hope my old chess club buddies don't see this. It also looks like a lot of hard work went into the background settings. Here we can set the primary background and lock screen background. As you can see, setting the primary background works very well. Let's test setting a custom desktop background just for fun. We pop open a web browser and search for whatever. This penguin with a phone looks appropriate. Long tap to right click does nothing. The view image button gives us a simple web page with only this image loaded. From here, a long tap acts as expected and right clicks. From this menu, we can just save the image as whatever we want. Now that it's saved off somewhere, let's head back to the image background settings. At the top, we can hit Select Picture and just navigate to where we saved off the image. The File Selection dialog is missing the Select button, or it's being rendered off screen. Double tap does not seem to select the image either. Fortunately, the keyboard saves us. Hit the Enter key, and that selects the picture for us. I'm not sure if we have a way to get back to an empty desktop and show off that image without closing all of these applications, but we'll go ahead and just close them for now. And there we go, a custom background image on the Librem 5 dev kit. It still needs a little bit of work. They still need to add a few options like tile background or stretch background, or even add black edges to display the entire image. It also seems like the lock screen background is not yet implemented, showing just a black screen at the moment. If you saw my last video, you would know that video playback in the web browser is not amazing at the moment. If left untouched, it can have some smooth playback, but it's best just to use mPlayer and download the video directly. Let's see how hard it is to download a YouTube video. All we need to do is navigate to a YouTube video, copy the URL with a long tap to right click, and then we pop open to a terminal. Install YouTube DL if you haven't already, then type in YouTube DL, space, long tap and paste that URL right back in there. So, YouTube DL has no problem running, and if we type in mPlayer in the file name, the playback is quite smooth. 
I'm sure in the future we'll have native GTK applications for searching and downloading YouTube content. I also downloaded the HD version of Nicole's talk about the Librem 5. It's not only a very good talk, but it plays back on the Librem 5 just fine. Although, I should have set the dimensions better. In the talk, we see our first glimpse of what the PCB of the Librem 5 will look like. Oh boy, I hope it's that green in the final product. This guy, online, took a stab at labeling stuff on the PCB. I'm pretty sure both the headphone and the M2 jacks are correct. Pretty interesting. I installed SuperTux, which after installed did appear in the menu. The game did load just fine, and with the W I could reload the in-game menu. I was even able to tap around the application. No other normal key does anything, though. If you press the key that switches between numbers and letters, it acts as valid input in this game somehow, so I can select things in the menu and hit the number or ABC key and it selects that menu item. Anyway, using this odd input method, I was able to try to start a game. However, on start, the app and or the phone crashed every time. I also loaded up MindTest, which appeared in the menu, but uh, failed to load utterly. Here's a bit of debug output. I did install a few other little games, but my camera just died, so darn. Like this video, Q3 is almost at an end. With it, we can expect a phone or delay. Let me know in the comments below which you'll think it'll be at the end of this month. Thanks for watching. Bye.